Hey everybody, Scout Crafter here again, TGIF, thank God it's Friday, you made it through another week, and, and they do go fast. First off, uh, we got a lot to cover today, I want to start off by saying uh, our challenge is less than two weeks away, uh, see how fast time goes, so the wooden mallet challenge, or make a wooden hammer, uh, is well underway. We have people that already completed the project, but uh, you know when when you have a month to do it We kind of procrastinate, but I did that because some of them wanted to go over the top and uh, you still got a lot of time uh, It's a weekend project at most so get get rolling on this or else you're gonna wind up and say geez It rolled up on me so fast. I'll be taking entries starting November 1st you can email them to my email address and uh, and then November 6th, Wednesday, is the due date. That's uh, that's the cutoff time. So, um, what we have today, a couple things to talk about. I've had so many requests asking me, they say, people say, what are those chemicals behind you? Could you talk a little bit about them? And uh, you know what? I've had so many people ask, I'm going to do it. Let's talk okay, about it first now. of all, on this wall of the basement, this is my little work area. And I'll tell you why. A lot of times, you know, the back here is where I have the shop. You know, that's the big shop back here. And all the lights from here back are all on one switch. And sometimes if I have a quick project to do, I come down and I, this has everything I need to do a quick project. And uh, it's right above the washing machines here. So one, two, three, I knock it out. That's why you see that. Over here, Aaron, my good friend Aaron, just retired. Congratulations, Aaron. He asked me about the tape, how I dispense my, you know, what, how do I have my tape hanging up? And uh, let me show you. I made this little thing. Hey, a couple this is years. my tape holder. Now, Joe from Joe's shop covered this a little while ago. Whenever you have some uh, roll of tape like this, you know, the last thing you want to do is lay it down on, on the floor because it'll pick up. You can see here, it picks up every little piece of dirt and everything. So you don't want to put them on the side on the workbench, especially if you have any dust or, or metal filings or anything. It's just a no no. So I made this uh, years ago. And what it is, it's basically it's, all it is is a one by two with some down in here I think these are quarter inch dowels and I drilled it at a small angle and to get this angle all you do is you just prop up a small block of wood on the drill press here and drill it in move it drill it move it drill it and it gives you the same angle all the way down and um, it's only about a you know a five degree angle and the reason that is is when it's upright that small angle stops the the rolls of tape from uh, falling off on their own but uh, you can see here how far apart these are, are about four inches apart bef uh, between the holes and that's so that when you get a roll of tape and it hangs down it gives you enough space you know for another roll of tape but uh, it probably would be better if you if you had the room to make it five inches apart because uh, they do get a little crowded sometimes but um, this and then there's a little hole in the top and this hangs up and it keeps your tape nice and clean when you put it on here and it's hanging up they don't touch uh, against any you know anything and, and pick up uh, residue on the side. Now, of the I wish tape. this was more organized, but I did this just because I'm, uh, like I said, I'm moving and I had to uh, get some of this out of the way. So I got some of my oils that I use down here, regular drip oils and the light machining oils. Over here is cutting fluid, obviously. This one's for aluminum, this is for regular. Uh, these are my homemade lubricants here that I use all the time. That's why they're down low and close. Uh, again, these are uh, Tap Pro Tap, Tap Magic. That's uh, the same that's in these cutting fluids, and this is a tapping or cutting fluid. Everybody should have it, we went through that. Behind it, we have the, uh, back here, we have the, um, uh, Anti-seize. Uh, I have copper and regular. That stuff is great. Uh, over here next to it, we have some crawl oil, which is uh, basically a, um, a penetrating fluid. But the best penetrating fluid is my 50-50 mix. You can see I need to make more of acetone, 50% acetone and 50% automatic transmission fluid. Um, up here, we have some lemon oils and things like that for furniture. We have uh, liquid wrench. We have um, 336, which is a, a really good, uh, it's almost like a, uh, a, a oil in WD-40. It's a really good lubricant. CRC makes it. Uh, a silicone. Uh, we have here, um, this is a, uh, a lubricant with, with PFT. It's a little thicker lube. It's a spray lube. Uh, again, silicone. Here's that tap magic that goes in these here. Um, again, more tap magic. Behind this one tap magic here, I have Gibbs. 
Gibbs is a, uh, a, a lot of people swear by that. I gotta tell you the truth, I haven't used it too much, but if you had good experience with it, let me know. Gibbs is supposed to be, a lot of people love that. Uh, my Triflow, this is all my lock area. Houdini, a lot of people say, what is Houdini? It's a, a lock lubricant. Same thing with this, uh, they're basically meant for locks and they don't leave a lot of residue behind. Um, over here, more tapping fluid, PB Blaster. Uh, this is something that, boy, man, does this smell or what? Does it stink? And uh, if you notice, I don't have any brake fluid here, brake uh, brake, brake cleaner, because you see brake cleaner is really pretty toxic, to, so I only use that outside. Uh, I have some graphite lubricant here, some decal adhesive remover. This here is made for aluminum tracks or something like if you have windows or slides, it's a special lubricant for that. Uh, same thing here, this is a track and cable lube. Again, they're up here because I don't use them too much. And uh, over here we have carbureted choke and uh, chem tool makes this. This is really good stuff. But again, it's up here because I don't use it much. So I leave, you know, whatever stuff I don't use much, I leave towards the top. So that's a quick rundown of some of the chemicals up here. I hope okay, that Okay, next up, uh, real quick question. You know, uh, shipping containers, uh, I have a fascination with those, and a lot of people do. They're a terrific uh, uh, storage solutions for a lot of us. We don't, you know, some people can take advantage of them here in the city I can't but uh, I, I always thought about upstate but I saw this picture on uh, I think it was Instagram of this shipping container some guy did this upright tell me what you think of this tell me if you don't think this is like uh, outstanding way for a couple shipping containers to make a, uh, a great workshop now here is the before picture you can see he has three shipping containers go two going north south one going east west and here it is done Look what a nice job he did. Whoever did this, my hat's off to you. What a beautiful job. Okay, next up, you know, it's padlock season for me. And, and um, uh, I wanted to talk about the, the laminated padlock because uh, it's so predominant and, and it's all over the world. And it was invented in 1924 by a gentleman by the name of Harry Soriff. He invented that lock and it's still in use today. And uh, let's let's take a look and see what okay, we're Okay, like about. I said, uh, in 1924, this padlock was invented. And, and you can see when I say laminations, these are the laminated steel plates here. It's cut out of, uh, punched out of steel plates and uh, then assembled using these rivets. Here we have an eight rivet assembly, these long pins. And uh, I'm gonna show you how that comes apart. But what's interesting is that it's been around for almost 100 years. It's coming up on 100 years now, and this thing is still uh, a viable and good lock. Now, it's come under a lot of criticism lately through the lock picking community because a lot of these locks are easy to pick. However, you have to remember that 98% of locks that are padlocks that are broken into are done destructively, meaning just like this one, they're cut, they're sawed, they're uh, broken open with a sledge, you know, so on less than 2% of all break-ins with locks or anything are picked. So, you know, when the lock pickers say, oh, that lock's terrible, you gotta be, you know, uh, the companies that make these locks are doing it for 98% of what, you know, you're fighting. You're not fighting lock pickers most of the time. And also, you know, most burglars don't wanna spend time trying to pick a lock and be, you know, they wanna get through as quick as possible. And that's why a lot of these are done with uh, bolt cutters and things like that. So. Let me show you quickly how this comes apart and what it's made of, because I always found it really interesting, laminated padlock. Now the first thing you'll notice is these are little bumper guards and they're made to protect the outside from scratching and then, because when they get scratched, they start to get rusted. So this actually protects the uh, the lock when it bangs against something. That's all these are for. They're rubber, or actually uh, like a plastic, heavy duty plastic uh, guard. And you can see it keeps the lock in nice condition. Uh, I'm going to wire brush this real quick and then we're going to drill out these pins and see what it looks like. Now look how nice this lock cleaned up, huh? I mean, I was only a few minutes on the wire wheel and, and that's why I like these. You know, I think this was one of my first restorations was old locks, so I still get a kick out of it. So anyway, now we're going to uh, center punch these and drill out the top heads of these uh, eight rivets. Okay, here's the setup. We sent a, we did a slight dimple in each top of uh, the dome of these rivets. And what we're gonna do is we have it into a, uh, a little vise here and uh, we're gonna position this here underneath each one of these to, uh, to get it just like this. And then we'll drill out and just, uh, this is the easiest way. You can grind them off, but I find this the easiest way. So we're gonna do that. Now 
Now you can see here we put small little holes in the top of them and then we're just going to use a regular drill bit to take it flush with that top plate. Okay, you can see we have most of the uh, rivets flush here. Now what we're going to do is try and punch them out and down and we'll see how that... Again, we're sandwiching it between woods not to... Uh, Okay, we lock. finished and you're probably wondering why would I spend over an hour taking apart a lock or you know for what use? Uh, to be honest with you, every time you're in the shop or any time you watch one of my videos or any other video, how to, you know, uh, you could learn not just by what their success is, but by my mistakes or anything else. But uh, that's why it's important, you know, to get down and fool around, do something that you enjoy or something you're in the mood for. And uh, it really helps. It, it makes you a better practice makes perfect. So let's see what we uh, okay, what we you have. can see here now again Like I said, it took so long because I didn't want to do any damage to the lock I want to take this apart and uh, without as little damage as possible and You can see here. We have all eight pins in good shape um, Over here is how the lock comes apart. And you can see when I say laminated uh, if we break the uh, lock in half you could see that uh, here in the bottom half you have the cylinder and this is uh, where the key goes in, and that's the cylinder here. And um, on this half, you could see you have a uh, something a little bit different. That the the shackle, the part that is locked into one of these uh, tabs. And I'm going to take it all apart and show you and lay it out. It's pretty interesting. Now here's the lock all broken down. It's broken down into about 32 uh, parts, and uh, that's including the cylinder, counting it as one when actually uh, there are eight pins in here and uh, the cylinder and the housing, so that would be 10, but uh, we counted this as one. You can see it's copper and brass and the uh, pins are brass. Um, it's a it's a quality made and a quality design, quality made lock. And uh, think about how long these have lasted and, and how long they've been around. What's so interesting is this is all stamped out of one piece of a sheet metal you can see here this this is the thickness of of the metal that this is uh, stamped out of and a lot of these are identical you know um a lot of the uh, plates are identical and some are are slightly different like this one here slightly different and they're numbered to show you obviously the top and the bottom are uh, are different because uh you know that has to that has to uh, encase the two but uh, and have their name and printing on it. But otherwise, they're, it's a very economical lock to make. Uh, this one here, which is interesting, holds the shackle captive in here. And uh, that's why you can't remove the shackle because this is in the middle of the lock and it's pinned in there. So, you know, that's why you can never get this out of there, which I thought was pretty interesting. And... Uh, you know, so that's the now, inside. I guess what I find so interesting is that even with the close tolerances and everything of these locks, um, I've never had one fail on me. I've never had a lock where I put the key in and it wouldn't work. Every time you take this key and you put it in a lock, you know that this thing's going to work. Can you imagine if you had to go upstate or something and get in your cabin and all of a sudden the lock failed on you? I mean, think about of all the locks that we've used in our whole lives, have you ever had... Uh, a lock fail on you. You know, it's it's a great design. Now, this is the size lock we've been working on and things like that. But for many years, this was uh, Master's flagship high security lock for their entire company. This was the strongest lock they made, the most secure lock they made. This was their number 19 lock, you could see here, Master number 19. And this lock is just humongous, if you can see how big this is. And it's uh, extremely well made and strong. And uh, you could see here, it's, uh, you know, obviously the keys are longer because it has more pins to it. It's just a, a beautifully made lock, but you could see they use the same lamination technique because it's so heavy duty, so trusting. And this was their uh, number one gray commercial lock that they made for many years. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this uh, quick presentation and uh, hope you have a nice weekend. Thanks so much. Take care now. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.